Hi, uh, Greg Perry, the Story Preservationist. Welcome to the Conservation Studio. Uh, continuing with the uh, with the windows, uh, did a total rebuild of the windows. All the tenons were rotted, and uh, much of the, the flat fascia was rotted, the muttons and mullions were rotted. Still enough fabric to save these as opposed to creating new ones. Always like, so we have 65% of fabric, so we're trying to, so we're back again. It's, it's a couple weeks later and he's still sleeping. He was sleeping last time he was over there. He was holding the window so it wouldn't tilt off, so he's still sleeping. Oh, but when it's tree time, we, we wake up, right? So, but anyway, um, so what we're doing is we're using just a adapt, uh, adapt glazing compound, a glazing putty, and pulling it through. So what you, uh, what we're doing is using some old glass. We're not using period, period, period old glass for these windows, but it is old and maybe it's a hundred years old. Um, these windows are probably 120, 180 years old. So uh, <clears throat> a little bit difficult to get that. We could use the reproduction glass and these are conscious decisions made by client and a conservator here, restore, because how much do you want to spend on here? Do you want to put an extra couple hundred dollars per sash we have six sash and the reason being that these are in the dormers these are all the way up on the roof nobody's going to know you may to the trained eye you may see a little bit no ripples but that's fine um, the rest of the house is going to have 24 pair of double hung sash that are going to be used in restoration glass so so what we're doing now is um, we're glazing these in so all the glass is going back where it was new glass the new old glass has been cut and you need to lay, uh, before the glass is put in, the, the rebate of the muttons and mullions, you need to put a little bit of putty or glazing around where this glass is going to be embedded into. So I took a little bit on the knife. Before the glass went in, I went around, flicked it in the rabbit, the rebate, and then I set or embedded the glass into that. Again, trying to get a perfect seal. And then I come around and I, I just get some get set some putty and, and, and I'm just pulling it tight into the sides and you want to get a good seal you want to fill that entire gap there's a you know there's a gap in there there's a, there's a gap in there between the glass and the uh, and the wood you want to fill that plus you want to create you want to create this angle this sloping angle so that the water's going to run off so and it's already done here you know and it, after you know after you've done this after you've done you know 5,000 windows it's pretty simple to pull this through and uh, you just need a, a good putty knife that has a little flex to it. And when, I'm, when I finish the one, I just want to take my fingers over and just, just in case it pulled away from the wood at all. And, and that's what they did. You know, use fingerprints all in their work, uh, the original work. Just go around and kind of massage it in a little bit. And that's going to do it. So here, before I start pulling uh, aside, I'm going to force in, putting a lot of pressure. I want that concavity to be filled. And uh, somebody else used this, used this for, for a lot of, uh, here we go, let's get this off here. It wasn't affecting us, but it was affecting me visually, it was bothering me. But nevertheless, you want a good putty knife. This is a hide with a little bit of flex. So what I like to come in first is to come into the corner and pull the corners out. It kind of sets the tone of how thick that your your glaze line is going to be and I get a real good flex I'm putting a lot of pressure and you want to find where the wood ends and the wood starts and try to hold your line all the way down and just take your time if you go too fast it's going to it's going to start to part and create holes and gaps in the putty and as you pull into the corner pull out like that and you know, re re refurbish all the extra putty, and then I come in, and I'm going to pull this out. And I find too many times when it doesn't matter the operation we're making here, molding planes in the conservation, we're making molding with molding planes, we're carving finials. Everybody has to be to the nth degree today. That's that's their mantra. It's like it was made on one of these these garbage CNC machines that they sell at Woodcraft and other places, where all you have to do is to use a, any idiot can use a laptop and you put a piece of wood in and the router goes back three axes and, and this is what you get. Of course, not to this detail, this is hand carved. Um, but we don't want to take the time to learn today, or younger people don't, so it's very sad, at least the trades and the arts. Let's continue on and stop complaining. 
So we're going to come back and we're going to pull the next corner, pull that out. And then again, we're going to pressure. It doesn't matter wh where you're standing, you know, create your own, uh, create your own workspace. Now I'm getting some pull here because I don't have the, the best stance, but now here's, here's some areas right here. Let me just pull this off. So these little, uh, these little rips, I'm going to come down my finger and I'm going to maybe just butt it up a little bit and it's all taken care of. Okay. And the paint's going to go and give me a good seal. It already has a good seal with the, uh, with the glazing potty. There's a couple different manufacturers out there. Um, I've been using DAP my first time I, I did this, I was eight years old. And again, if you can lay this almost horizontal with the ground, your putty knife, and I'm putting a lot of pressure, additional pressure with, with the two fingers of the other hand. And try not to stop, you want to make the complete, uh, the complete lineage into the corner, up and out. So pretty simple stuff. Uh, but it's, I guess it's easy to say when you've done, you know, a lot of these. So again, gather this up. It's, you know, it's good for the next window or for the next job you're using. Uh, but if this starts to dry out and when you pull and you don't get a good release from your putty knife, get rid of it, get something new. Get a new container of uh, compound. So again, a lot of flex. Determine what my angle is. You have enough strength to with one finger into the corner and pull up and out. So once once you get all your glazing compound forced in the window, I do one thing at a time. I put all the glazing compound on the window and then come back and then pull it all through like this, pull my lines through. And uh, just cinch that off there, come back. And it's so easy to, you know, if, if you make a mistake to clean up. And again, let's just go around with the fingers. There's no, no need to oil your fingers up. There's plenty of oil in this compound. This compound's gonna take a long time to dry, a few months, but you can still paint over it relatively quickly. You know, within a week, you can paint over this, or even less. So. And I mean, you should, you should just see if you haven't seen some of the putty jobs that are out there from the 18th century, or from actually people that are trying to do this today. And that's why they make windows today, cheap construction of plastic windows. Totally windows that deteriorate. So we'll, we'll just do a couple more here. Again, get your pressure down, horizontal with the ground, almost just a little, maybe 15 degrees up. The back of the putty knife. Into the corner, pull out, and that's it. So again, I rebuilt all these from scratch. It was actually more time in doing the rebuild job than than doing it from new. And just pull it away. And cut it there, pull it away. I mean, you develop your own techniques, but uh, you know what you're seeing here is what I've come up with to be the, the most effective and efficient. So let's just pull one more. Come down to this corner, gonna pull this clean, clean it out. And this guy out. Out of the corner, we got something up on the top, that's not a problem. He's stuck, just pull it back. So, so this is perfection as perfection should be on right here. This is what it should look like for a comparable restoration job on a early to late 18th or 19th century frame. So Greg Perry signing out and this guy has turned his back and he's done. He's done for the day. It's only around three o'clock.